So thank you, Chairman. Uh, so I'd like to uh, introduce um, uh, uh, Zaik has been doing in, in Ethiopia. Um, as uh, um, Dr. Khan mentioned, uh, uh, Japan has a certain kind of manager managerial um, uh, activities in, in Japanese companies. Um, as this morning, uh, Dr. John Sutton uh, mentioned Kaizen activities in Ethiopia. I'm going to introduce what has been doing in, uh, what we have been doing in, 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 in that country. But before that, uh, since time is limited, I'm, I'm starting from this slide. Um, in 1990s, um, um, Japan has a um, kind of debate uh, with World Bank um, on uh, industry policy. Um, many of you are very much aware about uh, the debate between Japan and World Bank in the 1990s. Of course, there was East Asia Miracle. I, I found John Pesi there, so I, <laughs> I um, hesitate to mention about this. But um, uh, Japan was slightly disagreed with um, the uh, East, East, East Asia Miracle. Even though there was very rich discussion in, in early 1990s, um, mainstream um, economic policy uh, hasn't changed and industry policy was somehow um, sidelined side in the bank, even in, in, in JICA. Uh, so among donor communities, maybe I should say, industry policies supposed not to pronounce in front of children um, and <laughs> until quite re recently. But um, here, here we are. Uh, there are many um, uh, pro-industry policy um, economists and professor here. Uh, quite recently, uh, there's a uh, return of industry policy to our uh, discussion. So, Roderick, Lin, uh, Justin Lin and Chan, uh, Shimori Dosi, Stiglitz. So, again, um, we, we are seeing so many rich discussion among uh, academics. And also, among donor countries, gradually, uh, we are having discussion on industry policy. Uh, in 2010, Donor Committee for Enterprise Development had a uh, uh, session on industry policy. GDI published report, Human Development Report in 2012, uh, uh, that was uh, on developer states, KDI, uh, Unwider Brookings, and JICA. So gradually we are moving ahead. But still, um, um, not so many um, um, donor countries are, are eager to support industry policy. So uh, even, even in Ethiopia, there was big discussion among donor uh, community whether we should support industry policy or not. Then um, why industry policy is important, even though there, there's an issue of um, political capture and market government failure? Um, investing in learning tend to become underinvestment due to market failure. Uh, knowledge is supposed to be public goods. So it should be zero managerial cost. But in many cases, uh, learning phase is kind of uh, loss for, uh, losses for private, private farms, so barrier to entry. Then um, uh, for private companies, um, there's no point to invest to learning. So there's role to play for states to catalyze learning. Um, Quite recently, um, African Union uh, also um, uh, adopted AIDA, Action for the Accelerated Industrial Development of Africa. So uh, we, Japan has been aligning uh, our activities to this important um, action uh, plan. Then, uh, okay, learning is important, but what kind of learning is important? Um, in the last two days, uh, we have been discussing mainly new technology and skill. Not, maybe this session is whether management capital is important or not, but my, my answer is yes. Um, uh, other than technology and skill, um, other types of knowledge is important, as John Sutton uh, mentioned this morning. Um, in 1956, uh, in Soros, Equation management capital is just as a residu residual, but um, uh, recently, uh, Brun, Kalan, and Shura, uh, uh, maybe my pronunciation is not very good, um, uh, they identify that missing capital in Africa is um, management capital. So, management capital improve 
uh, managerial productivity of, of input and uh, improve resource constraints. So managed capital is, does matter for African development. A small empirical study so far. Um, uh, Professor Sonway is over there. He is one of uh, those, uh, he has done very important um, study on, on empirical studies. But beyond managerial capital, um, I think policy learning is also uh, important. Um, country context matters. There's no one size fits all um, uh, recipe as uh, Dr. John Page um, uh, presented uh, this morning. Um, uh, donor countries um, tend to present one, one size fits all policy to our partner countries. Um, so what matters is learn how to learn selectively is important. If we look at Asian and developer paths, I dare to say that there were three Ds, diversity over, uh, across countries, diversity over time, diversity in growth leading industries. So um, Asian experience is, as uh, Dr. Khan mentioned, is very diverse. Um, some countries is domestic capital dependent, and some countries are foreign capital dependent, like uh, Singapore. And some countries are natural resource rich, like Brunei. And uh, some countries like Japan is natural resource poor. So East Asia is very rich. And historically, um, the policy is also different. If we, if we look at this, maybe this is too small, maybe, so later, maybe later you can check uh, through uh, internet. Um, this is a, a history of each country's um, in the policy. Um, like Malaysia started from import substitution, then started export orientation. Return to import substitution, again uh, export orientation. But there's no how to say, um, uh, single pattern uh, of these policies. So each country choose, selected their own, um, based on the analysis, they selected their own policy. Uh, and the last D is diversity in growing growth leading industries. Some countries started from heavy industry, some countries started from textile, so um, again, um, it's different. So each country needs to finding out how to select good policy. It's, um, it's um, how to say, uh, there's no one that fits all. And government policy is quite important catalyzing learning or uh, investing um, for private firms, without knowing government long-term policy, it's a kind of risk. What, what is inflation policy? What is external policy? What is industry policy? Without knowing those kinds of things, it's very difficult for private firms to invest in human capital. I'm just skip this one now. This is structure of learning. So starting from Sanjay Lau and Simone Dos and Stiglitz, they propose structure of learning, um, I'm, but I'm not going to discuss detail. But what I would like to um, propose as a comprehensive approach to learning, uh, a new structure is this. There are two types of learning. One is policy level learning, the first two, and then private firms level learning. For, for policy, um, policy planning, and uh, policy implementation. Policy implementation, implementation is like uh, um, uh, for, for bureaucrat, how to support um, uh, private firms, how to avoid fragmentation between ministries and um, bureaus. For private firms, um, technology skill is important, but when we talk about managerial capital, um, again, there are three um, aspects strategic business administration, top from the, 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 the companies. They need to learn how to operate the private firms. But at the same time, in, in, in the factory level, they need to know what kind of 
um, process they need to um, uh, employ for effective production. So it's a manufacturing floor management. And then basic business skill, like uh, how to keep record of um, transaction and those kind of things. So um, as a donor agency, uh, um, JICA, uh, we try to, we have, we're trying to assist our partner countries this comprehensive structure in mind. In Ethiopia, uh, there was TICAT 4 in 2008, and, and there was G8 Hokkaido Tokyo Summit, uh, Toyak Summit in, 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 in Hokkaido in 2008. And uh, there was a meeting with uh, Professor Stiglitz, uh, uh, IPD, Initiative for Policy Dialogue in Ethiopia. Uh, um, in 2008, there are so many uh, meetings uh, happening. So following up our discussion and commitment, we started our support to Africa. And when we had a, a discussion with uh, Professor Stiglitz in Addis Ababa, uh, there were two requests from, from Prime Minister Meles. One is support to formulate uh, five years development policy, and the other is support to um, private companies. So we started dialogue-based um, uh, industrial policy uh, discussion and project on, on Kaizen. Kaizen is, as Dr. Khan mentioned, uh, it's an uh, incremental innovation, uh, keeping in mind our, about involvement, involvement of labor. Uh, maybe uh, I should say lean production management is more uh, familiar for, for most of you. Um, this is a list of um, uh, results for our private companies. We selected 30 um, model firms. Um, uh, we visited those 30 firm, private firms ten, just 10 times, uh, giving them questions instead of <coughs> answer. Uh, by the way, it's not a Japanese expert. Uh, it's an Ethiopian expert visiting those um, uh, private companies. Um, as you can see in the uh, red uh, word, um, average uh, quantitative benefit is uh, almost 30,000 US dollars per company. Um, uh, average benefit per head is uh, 73 US dollars. So, um, and uh, monthly wage, average uh, monthly wage for Ethiopian workers is 75 US dollars. So with just 10 times visit, um, there was a big impact um, in Ethiopia. So after, after completing this uh, 30 uh, pilot companies, um, there are huge demand from Ethiopian companies. So now we start second phase, um, uh, attracting more than 160 uh, private companies um, uh, to, to assist on Kaizen. This is just a, a pictorial presentation of uh, the, the difference. Uh, in the left-hand side is before, and uh, right-hand side is after. Um, before, it, this is factory um, floor. Uh, it's a kind of very messy, so it's very difficult to find out material. So, but here, uh, it's set in order, so it's easy to find the, finding out. So there's no need to, um, loss of time for, for workers. And here, before there was no table, um, this is a steel industry. So laborers need to put all the heavy materials onto the floor. And they put the table here, so um, laborers don't need to um, pick it up from the floor. These are very small changes, but accumulation of small changes um, can produce big change. That is um, a kind of, uh, as Dr. Kamesh, incremental innovation of uh, Japanese management. And uh, these were uh, private farm, uh, farm, uh, uh, farm level. And uh, there are four factors uh, from policy point of view. There was clear policy message from the government, uh, Ethiopian government. Uh, so, um, of course, not 30 companies are not, not equal. There are some successful companies, 
some are not, not very good companies. The difference is uh, managers, managers' strong commitment uh, to the improvement. Um, uh, because of uh, government clear message, um, uh, it is easier for companies to adapt, to invest to, to this um, new, techno, new managerial trial. So as I said, um, there, there are uh, market failure, but with support from government, clear message from government, um, uh, they um, uh, try to avoid uh, market failure. Um, uh, and uh, there's learning on policy side as well. Um, uh, during the course of dialogue, we provide um, some lessons from Asia, um, from Korea, from China, from Taiwan, from Singapore. We provide some uh, information to 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 um, uh, Egyptian government, and they select it. But they what is the most suitable to to their their situation? Um, they drafted uh, MSC development policy by themselves uh, in the framework, framework for five years plan. There was some fight between Japan and Ethiopia, but still um, they, uh, uh, there was disagreement between us, but uh, how I say, um, they drafted their own um, MSC development policy. I congratulate for, um, for them about that. And putting this MSC development policy uh, they catalyze learning in, in private sector. So now Ethiopian companies know what government will support. Um, so it's easier for, for uh, them to invest um, managerial capital. Um, learning policy implementation. So as I said, all the experts are from, from not Japanese um, experts, Ethiopian experts. So, um, uh, they train Ethiopian um, experts and try to reduce fragmentation among ministries. It's a kind of very complicated um, bureauc bureaucrat bureaucratic system uh, on MSC development policy in Ethiopia, but they somehow try to um, reduce fragmentation in M MSC uh, support policy. So, um, after this, this is uh, first case for, for, for us, but um, now we have been trying to spreading out um, this uh, Kaizen uh, movement uh, from Ethiopia to, to other countries. So that is all. Thank you very much.